What's up guys, it's been a while since I uploaded something on my YouTube channel or gave any sign of life on my Discord channel. I even saw that some of you thought I died from some recently popular virus, but the truth is that most of the people in the trading YouTubers industry stop making videos because they either start making money on the market or they have just too much other work to do, so there's no time left for YouTube content. In my case, it was both. Too many clients, too much work, too many messages from people which in total made me unable to process all of this. I had to resign from something and this thing had to be YouTube. But hey, I'm back and I made a goal for myself to focus more on growing this channel with plenty of cool content. I really miss that mini community we created and all of the interactions we had but I will have to create some smart ways from now on to communicate with all of you and to also have a personal life because the volume was just too high for me. For those who had hard times working with me regarding the delays I'm so sorry I took just too many jobs than I was able to process so please forgive me. Anyway this video will be about what I achieved during last year of my YouTube absence and what is the game plan for the following months. Ok so let's remind ourselves where we stopped. I was coding my own software to perform latency arbitrage trading on the market so how it went from the last year? I created multiple versions with different approaches, with the first version I was unable to adjust any accounts, everything was coded as a static objects and every single line of code I added to the project made me huge pain, so I decided to scrap it and start from scratch again. The app was also ugly, so for the next attempt I used material design framework to implement some nice looking controls. I created a common interface for the session connection. I also added dynamic repositories to hold those interface implementations. I was playing around with APIs and ended up with developing the LMAX API connection through their .NET API. I made the Rhythmic API connection, direct connection to MT4, MT5 accounts, the CTrader fix connection. At that time I was also playing around with IQ feed. So when I had the connectors implemented, I had to handle all the quotes. So what I did is just I add a list of quote symbol objects to each implemented interface and on new quote I was handling the data inside the broker connection object. I just took the subscribe symbol from the dictionary object and update the ask and bid values accordingly to the tick data I received and bin the update method to invoke the updates of Windows platform GUI controls which ended up as a stupid mistake that I didn't know at the time but more about this later on my other videos. So the most important thing was that after a few versions of my software and with help of two very important people that contributed to my growth, I finally started making money on the market. It was not in the millions, more like an average software engineer's salary, so it was my additional income, I would say. And believe me guys, if you are just starting with coding as a junior position, Creating the proper high frequency trading software that has low latency and is easily scalable and adjustable to multiple connections at the same time is not an easy task, believe me. It involves many tricks and techniques on handling your heap and stack memory allocations, creating a proper architecture to be able to process millions of quotes per second without any delays and of course to be able to maintain a trading connection with multiple brokers and exchanges at the same time with common interface. So it sounds complex and it is and you need to keep in mind that most of the exchanges use their own specific protocols when it comes to client to server communication. So believe me guys, it's very complicated stuff and I mean of course, if you want to build one connection to CTrader, one to MetaTrader with one symbol and one strategy, then yes, it could be relatively easy. It might even work, but for sure it will not scale and if you will need in the future to add some more features which of course you will because we all do, it will make your life miserable. Also, most of the time the code base in that case would be garbage, I can bet on this. So basically what I mean is that if you want to build something scalable with good code quality and low latency, you need to learn the principles of low latency coding first, design patterns like circular buffers or object pooling, no allocation programming, Make everything as an interface, even if you think you don't need it, believe me, you will need it. Okay, but anyway, coming back to what I did, 
I, during that time, I, I also found some clients I was developing software for and some business partners who helped me grow and increase my skills and my knowledge. Special thank you to all of you. So the amount of work was growing, but my time was very limited. I was overwhelmed so much that on some point I had to ditch all of the low return clients and decided to work with only two people that has proven that long term relationship is working for us. So I was working, I was trading, I was working, programming, testing new technologies to that point that I almost killed my old Dell laptop. So I decided to reinvest some of my profits to buy a new MacBook for my work stuff. And instead of three small monitors that you could see in my previous videos, I got one ultra wide. So this investment in total costed me around $4,000, but it was worth it as I'm working on the devices still now and I'm very, very happy. So when it comes to my life, okay, going forward while I was developing and testing new versions of my software, at some point I got burnt out and decided with my wife that we need a vacation. During pandemic times there was not many options, so we decided to go to Mexico for three weeks, Cancun and Tulum being precisely. We really enjoyed the trip, it was a nice breakout from all the lockdowns going up in the Europe. I could even feel the freedom there, Cancun was like the small Miami. I have never been to Miami, but according to movies and pictures I saw, it looked kind of similar. We stayed only three days in the beach hotel and moved to Tulum by a public transport. Prices were affordable compared to Europe, except some places run by people from US with US prices. So I was also doing some trading during that time and it was game changer for me as I realized I can make money during traveling. But anyway, three weeks left and my wife had to go back to their job as fashion designer so we came back. But at that point I already knew I want to move out from Europe. So when we came back I created a plan. Number one, convince my wife to move out of Europe. Number two, renovate our flat to be ready for any possible Airbnb service. Find a place that will have a nice weather and affordable prices and finally move out from Europe. While I was trying to show my wife all the benefits of living abroad, she wasn't so sure so we started to renovate the flat. It was like never ending black hole sucking all of our minds. Lots of trouble finding a good team as we had problems with the people we found. One of them was even a secret junkie who made more mess than it was, took our money and started to blackmail us so I even ended up on the police reporting this issue. And the renovation ended and I started to look out for a place to move out. We had two choices at the time, Thailand or Mexico. Mexico had many benefits, but Thailand won in the end due to the housing prices. Anyway, Thailand and Thai people got hit hard by the pandemic and lockdown, so the prices dropped due to not so many tourists and we could find some bargains on the villas. That was the key point as in Mexico we would pay two or even three times more per the same type of house for a monthly rent. So the only thing left was convincing my wife to move out and then the inflation happened. The inflation hit so hard in Poland and it's still hitting even more now that it was the major point that made us leave the country. For example, the takeaway food prices rise 50% in the six months, which is just like crazy. It was like a joke for me. Petroleum prices again 50%, energy prices almost 100% and the salaries in Poland stayed the same. So yeah. My wife quit her job, we packed our things, left our apartment, told our families that we are going to Thailand in order to find a place we want to settle down, with no idea when we will come back, and we just bought a flight. Gdańsk, Warsaw, Qatar, Bangkok, Koh Samui, and we arrived. The prices here were as affordable as I remembered it being in Phuket five years ago when we went there for holidays. So yeah, we live now in Koh Samui, Thailand for a few months already. We don't know for how long we will be here, but our mission is to find our place in the world, which is affordable, modern, and allow you to go with flip-flops all year around. I'm also working and trading and growing my businesses. I have a lot of ideas, but first I need to finalize my two projects I have been working on so for a very long time. In the next videos, you can expect content regarding me developing my low latency trading software for four and many more tutorials so if you have any ideas where to push this channel forward just let me know in the comments or on on discord anyway all the best thanks for watching please subscribe to this channel uh, join our discord channel and, and see you soon in the next videos